Hi class, we're going to dig into pruning in this module and we have some really good videos coming up for you, but we want to take you through the basics first before we, we show you kind of what we do to some trees in the real world. Um, this will walk you through some of the tools you need and the hows and whys of pruning. Starting off with our tools, here's a couple of the things that we really like. Hand pruners, a nice bypass hand pruner set that is comfortable for you to use. There's a lot of different brands and sizes. Um, it's nice to find one that fits your hand. Loppers, bypass loppers are best. Uh, these are a pair of telescoping loppers so they can get longer or shorter as you need to. Here's a folding pruning saw. These things are really great. They're super sharp. And this is a regular pruning saw. In some of our videos, you'll see that we're using a man, or, um, an electric sawzall <laughs> with a battery pack. That's accomplishing essentially the same thing as this tool here, the, the regular pruning saw. So if you have trouble sawing or you have some challenges there, um, a sawzall is an acceptable tool to use as well. So these are our essentials. And we're going to start with young trees. Um, a lot of times when folks buy their citrus trees, they're about this size and age. This is probably a three-year-old grafted tree. And in many cases, they've been shaped somewhat at the nursery that they've come from. Um, you know, since they're a couple years old at least, uh, they've been shaped and pruned selectively by the nursery owners and the workers so that you're set up with a decent structure to these trees as soon as you purchase it. You do want to get a healthy looking tree, so choose one that looks good um, visually, doesn't have any yellowing leaves, any dead branches, things like that. You all know what a healthy tree should look like at this point, hopefully. A two to four foot tree is ideal, and the good nursery trees already have that good framework. So what that means, and this is a good example, is we've got a nice clear trunk with no suckers or anything coming off, and there's three or four nice branches heading in different directions where they're not all crowded together. That's a nice, nicely shaped tree. So within the first year, you're going to remove the main leader. So oftentimes with our fruit trees, we'll get one dominant branch kind of coming straight up. You want to remove that so that the tree focuses its energy on these branches, which will be our scaffolding. So that's what you should do that first year. This can be um, you know, anywhere from 18 to 36 inches above the ground level, but what you wanna do is set that young tree up to have a nice clear canopy. You don't want any of these branches when they're weighed down with fruit in the future to be touching the ground. So try to keep it pruned upwards and that's gonna save you some trouble in the future. Um, any branches below that point should be removed. And remember, we've talked about that root stock that sometimes sprouts out down here from below the graft. That's something that should always, always, always be removed. And we're gonna talk more about that here. Here's a really good picture of it where we've got our graft point here, and this is that trifoliate orange trying to take over the grafted variety of the tree. So always remove that as soon as you see it. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. With older trees, there's some reasons for pruning um, that we like to highlight, first and foremost, to maintain the size. When we went through all the different citrus cultivars, you saw that there's a wide range of average sizes, depending on what you're planting, and we don't all have room for a 20-foot tree, right? So pruning is a way that we can maintain a smaller, more compact tree, even of those varieties that get big and like to sprawl. So annual pruning can take care of that problem. Next, we want to remove dead, damaged, or diseased limbs. And here is a really good example of frost damage, where we've got healthy new branches emerging, but this one and maybe this one are kind of brown, they're not coming back. Those can be pruned out so that you have more space for those new branches and that new healthy growth to come out. You want to remove any crossing or touching branches, and what happens there is when branches cross, and the wind kind of moves them around, they rub, and then you end up with a wound on those branches that can be an entry point for diseases and fungal problems. So you want to remove anything crossing or touching. Again, remove those rootstock suckers. This is the number one pruning mistake we see when we're working with home growers. 
Um, don't ever let that go because it will take over and you don't want to eat those fruit and once it gets big it's got wicked sharp thorns and it's really not fun to deal with. So it's better to catch it when it's that size. You want to remove water sprouts and what we mean by water sprouts are weak new growth kind of shoots coming out of the canopy of the trees. We see these a lot in the early spring and into the early summer months as well, where the tree is putting out lots of new leaves, lots of new growth, and it's just kind of shooting branches all over the place. And sometimes they look very wacky because they're going in all directions. And if you don't want to keep those, you can prune those back. It's not going to hurt the tree and it keeps it nice and tidy. So prune out any of those water sprouts. We've heard them called water spouts as well, but it's water sprouts. <laughs> You prune also to open up the canopy. And what happens there is an open canopy, a nicely structured canopy allows a lot of light and airflow into the middle of the tree, which is gonna help with your disease and pest resistance. Um, it's a nice natural tool to keep things healthy. So prune that inner part of the tree as well, not just the outside edges. Pruning encourages stronger limbs. And you wanna remove any limbs that touch the ground. Remember when I was talking about that young tree, setting it up for success, pruning that canopy up, but as your trees mature, some of those limbs might try to grow back down towards the ground or get weighed down with lots of fruit. You can always trim those back. You wanna keep everything up off the ground. It makes for a much healthier tree and it's easier to mow and maintain underneath that tree canopy. Couple of pruning pointers, here's some tips. The best time to tackle any major pruning on your citrus trees is in the dormant months before they're gonna start flowering for the next year's crop. So in our area, that's generally January and into February. In the very southern parishes of the state, it's more in January. And then when you get across the lake into the Baton Rouge or central Louisiana area, that would safely take place in February. So depending on where you are, you might have to wait. You don't wanna prune when there's any kind of frost threat or um, potential freeze damage because the more you cut, the more that cold's able to enter the tree. So hold off until it's definitely spring, but you wanna get your pruning done before the trees start to bloom. Under the Clorox here, you do wanna sterilize your pruners and your saws in a 10% bleach solution. This is a good general practice for any kind of gardening but especially when you're pruning fruit trees. Your clippers can pick up bacteria or fungus, and as you're clipping and working, you can spread that from plant to plant or tree to tree. It's a good idea to just kind of quickly dip those pruners or that saw into a bucket of bleach water. That's gonna help decontaminate it. Proper pruning angle and bud locations. We don't wanna leave any stubs. Stubs are an entry point for disease and insects to come in. So this is a good 45 degree angle cut. And you notice right here, that's a bud. That's where some new leaves might emerge or it might be a point where some fruit would form with your blossoms. But you wanna cut so that that longer angle is above that bud. And this is kind of protecting it here. This is too angular. So all of this will just be dead tissue, not really fulfilling any purpose. This is too low of an angle. You see that bud is now exposed. And cutting straight across, um, usually not a good idea. The tree is not able to heal over as well. Um, and then leaving you know, this much of a stub or that much material to die back, just not very neat and clean. And it is another entry point for issues to come in. So you don't wanna leave those stubs. When you're pruning, it's best to prune back to a bud or to a larger branch. And that's what we're showing here. So if you are to remove this branch, you don't wanna cut it here. You wanna cut it back to the trunk because the tree's gonna be able to heal over and compartmentalize much easier. And if you look at these, you wanna use the three cut method to remove large branches where your first cut is here, your second cut is here so that you end up with this whole limb over here falling off. That first cut takes the pressure off the second cut takes the weight off so that you can make your third cut here at the branch collar. And the collar is the point where that branch and the trunk meet. That's where the tree is most likely to heal over and seal off. And if you make your cut in the right spot, you're gonna end up with a healthier tree. So first cut relieves the pressure, second cut relieves the weight, third cut neatens the whole thing up. 
Um, it's a really good strategy to do, and we actually show that in some of our videos coming up. Um, but make sure you don't leave any stubs, because if you just cut out here and then you leave that branch, what's going to happen is this is going to die back, it's going to rot, water could get in there from rainfall, it could rot into the heart tissue of the tree, um, termites can get in, that's a huge problem in the New Orleans area. You do want to keep things neat and cut in the correct spots. With that, we're going to show you several videos pruning young trees, pruning out of control large trees, and doing some general maintenance on our citrus trees using those pruning techniques and tools that we just covered. Make sure you post any questions and pictures of your pruned citrus trees to that Facebook group. Good. Hi class, today we're going to talk about pruning citrus trees. We're here at a site in New Orleans and we have a range of different citrus varieties, different ages, and different pruning problems to look at today. We're going to start right here with this calamondin. If you take a look at this tree, right off the bat you notice that only half the tree has fruit on it. The other half does not. And if you follow this branch, this whole half of the tree, actually emerges from below the graft point, meaning that this is the rootstock trying to take over the tree. So we're actually going to prune that out, remove it, and do some shaping on the actual calamondin to get it healthy again. So besides tracing the branch back to where it emerges from the trunk, there's a few other ways you can tell if you're dealing with a rootstock problem. If you compare the leaves of the two, they're very different. Different shape, different size, and this is a telltale sign. There's some wicked thorns on this. So many of the rootstock varieties that we use on citrus here in Louisiana are developed from trifoliate orange or a similar cultivar. They're bred to be a little more cold tolerant, a little more resistant to soil-borne pathogens, but most of them also have thorns. So that's how you can tell. You should prune the rootstock anytime you notice the rootstock. There's really no bad time to do it. The longer it stays, the more resources it saps away from the actual cultivar you want to grow. So after we've removed all that rootstock, there's actually a pretty nicely shaped healthy calamondin tree that remains. We do want to go in and thin things out a little bit and remove any damaged or crossing branches. And we're going to use our loppers and our hand pruners to get that done. It's always a good idea to take a few minutes and really evaluate the tree, get in there and look at what the situation is. You don't need to rush this. And remember, you can always go back and prune some more. Citrus, citrus trees are very forgiving. <laughs> right here, we have a young branch that's crossing and actually rubbing against an established part of the tree. So we're gonna remove that and clip it as close to the branch as we can. And some of these, like this one, this is another crossing branch. You can actually see where the bark has worn away from the outer side. So we know it's rubbing. That can be an entry point for diseases and insect pests as well. So we want to get rid of that. And we got a few more rubbing over here. And if you look at these branches that are getting removed from the inside of the tree, they're not very productive. There's only been two fruits off of all of these. So it's not a bad idea to think about removing some of these inner branches. Like this one. And 
And by removing the inner branches, you actually get a lot more airflow into the tree. And we're actually going to use loppers for this one kind of opens things up so you can get sunlight in there as well and it results in an overall more productive tree in the long term. Another crossing branch. This one's going to cross. These ones. Okay, that's looking pretty good on the inside. We've removed all of our crossing branches and anything with the potential to cross. Oh, except this one. Here's another one that's rubbing. You can actually see where that's happening. Sloppers. Okay. All right. So next we're going to remove any low hanging branches that might get overloaded with fruit and make contact with the ground. Um, that's another entry point for pests and diseases and it's a good idea to keep your trees pruned upwards. So this is a really low one here. Let me get rid of that one. And then right off the bat I'm looking at this one here. We're going to remove this as well. And if you look there's actually a metal stake still from the nursery that's become embedded in that branch I just removed. So now we can actually use some wire snips and get rid of this as well. Okay. Little ones. I'm just doing some cleanup. Leave that one. Anything dead should be removed as well. Like this branch was brown all the way through. This was a dead one. Those can be removed. Okay, this is actually looking pretty good. Our next move would be to, if it were too tall to harvest from, to top it. And we can bring it down usually by no more than 30% in a given year, but they can handle it. Anything that's getting too wide and growing towards other trees can also get trimmed back and when you do that you want to follow the branch back to where there's a junction and make your cut there but overall this calamondin is looking a lot better this is a satsuma tree this one was recently planted but there is some pruning that we can do here to ensure that it's going to have a good structure as it gets larger if you look at the overall trunk or the leader of the tree, you see that we have three nice, healthy branches, all pointed in different directions, but we also have this kind of uh, sport coming off the middle of the trunk. So if we think about this tree as it grows and matures, this is going to be a low-hanging branch eventually, and as it ripens with fruit, that could bend down and make contact with the ground. So it's actually better to lop this off now at a young age so that the tree has more energy in the upper growth and not on something that we're going to remove five years down the line. So we're going to just snip that right off. With these young trees, it's very important to monitor them for rootstock growth. Trifoliate orange will come out below this graft point. And when they're small, it's easy to just kind of walk by and just pull them off with your hands. You don't even need hand pruners.